So one of the tools that most animators use in order to edit their animations is motion trails. Now, motion trails in Maya 2022 has improved a whole lot. It's fast, it's no longer slow, and it has one killer feature that I'd like to share with you guys. And I'm pretty sure it will help you to visualize and edit your keys much easier than before. So without further ado, let's get started with this episode. Okay, so I hope you guys are doing well. This is episode 10 of Animation Power Tips, sponsored by Autodesk. Once again, thank you so much for Autodesk for sponsoring this content. Now, episode 10 marks the last episode of this season. I think this has been a lot of fun and to share these tips with you guys. Um, but don't worry, we have another season planned out with another 10 episodes, so stay tuned for that. And I think it's going to be very excited. We're changing the format a little bit, and I think it's going to be more useful for more people out there. Now, in regards to motion trails, it's very used by a lot of people. And historically, before, many years ago, at least when I started and they were first introduced, they used to slow down your scene very much and people didn't use it very much even though they liked the idea of motion trails. Many years have passed and now motion trails are much faster, much better, and things are fluent, right? So when you press play, especially with animation caching, things are really fluent. Now in Maya 2022, there's this killer feature of motion trails while you're editing your motion um, that really makes them super useful from now on. And I think that I'm gonna use it for sure instead of using external plugins and maybe you guys will use it as well after seeing what I'm going to show you next. So let's jump in and get started. All right. So here I have a scene is a guy just like running, kind of doing like a little flip on the floor and then uh, continue running. He means business. He's happy. He's, do he's doing good, right? Now, this scene is raw, raw mocap. You can see in the motion that there's things that need to be cleaned up and all that stuff. So I want to double check my curves to make sure that those arms and legs are doing what I want them to do and what kind of motion are they doing in order to get the best arcs possible, right? So the idea of motion trails, for those that don't know, is basically a visual way for you to see your curves in your viewport, right? I remember when it first came out, it was so fun to see everyone like was blown away and Everyone thought this was going to basically change how you add it, animate in Maya because you can actually um, tweak your keys in the viewport. Um, unfortunately, as I mentioned before, it was a bit slow, um, at least to my liking. But now we are at the point that you can definitely use your motion trails to edit your motion. So the way it works, basically, if I show my, my nerves curves here really quick, uh, you can do that by pressing Alt-1, right? So Alt-1 hides them, Alt-1 uh, shows them again. Just for those that don't know, um, the idea being that whenever you select the controller, if you actually go into in your animation menu, if you actually go to visualize and then create editable motion trail, you will get a motion trail that will follow that controller in your viewport. Now, before we press that button, we need to go to the options because I like to tweak my options a little bit. And the way I have mine, and feel free to copy mine if you like, is instead of having start and end, which means that if I click it, it will basically just show me everything in my, my, my timeline. So from frame zero in this case to frame 75, it will actually be like a lots of lines in my screen. Instead of that, I actually go for time slider. And time slider allows you to basically select a range that you like, for example, like this, and then it will show you just that piece of motion trail in the, within that range. Now, further to that, I like to keep the increments at one. So one frame each increment. So it will show you every single key, but I only do that when I'm doing mocap, when I'm actually cleaning a mocap, like in this case, if I'm doing hand key and I want to like visualize something, I will probably put, change this number depending on the process and the, where I'm at in my animation. So if it's right at the beginning and I'm blocking and I have, I'm actually blocking in every four keys or five keys, I will change those increments to five or four or whatever I'm actually working with, right? So it's small cap, so one, it's fine, one frame. Um, now, pre-frames and post-frames, this allows you to shorten 
your um, your visualization or just have the full range of your time slider. I like to show 10 keys at a time before and after. So this is why I stand here. And then I like to actually always draw instead of selected because otherwise you have to go back and forth all the time. I like to, normally this number and this number are set at one. I like to put my thickness a little bit higher than one, so two. And then a key size, which is like the squares that show up, I'll show you in a second. I like to put them at three so they're nice and thick and you can see them. Also, make sure you tick show frame numbers all the time so you can see not only the keys but also the frame numbers. And then you apply. So when you apply this, you will see this motion, right? So what you see here is basically that motion represented in your viewport as keys um, and also a trail that represent that curve or that arc that you're trying to achieve with that controller, right? Now, the beauty of this is that you can select your keys in your viewport and you can actually like, you know, tweak them if you like, which is pretty cool. Now, tweaking uh, motion in your base layer in mocap is never a good idea. Make sure you check my previous videos when I talk about how to edit mocap. But in this case, you'll never want to edit this. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, you can close this now if you like. Now, what you see is that if you actually create an editable motion trail, you cannot like control Z, kind of like delete that motion trail. What you need to do is basically go to the outliner and then you will have a node here called motion trail handle. And then you have to delete this motion trail handle in order to delete the curve, right? So if I do that, then my uh, motion motion trail is now gone and for my scene. So if I don't want to see anymore, that's what I need to do. Now I've gone ahead and created a motion trail already and I'm going to just show it here for you guys. So my motion trail is exactly as it was before. So as you can see, it's just following my animations. Now it doesn't matter where I am in my timeline. It gives me 10 frames before and 10 frames after. Now, um, what I want to explain in, in how I work with motion trails is with layers, right? Because most likely, if you have something that you want to edit, let's say you actually want to add more dip into this section here, right? You would actually put a, a layer on top of your uh, raw mocap and then edit that motion accordingly. Now, what you can do once you have your editable motion trail on the, the controller that you want, you can go ahead and create an animation layer on top of that base layer, right? You'll see that no keys show up in that motion because obviously there's no keys to show up. So if I actually want to edit, for example, as I mentioned, this area here that is not dipping in and I want to make sure that it is dipping in, I'll go ahead and set a key and you'll see what happens in a second. There's a key there. There's a key there as well. And a key there as well. So you can see that the three keys are not showing, right? And you can continue doing this for anywhere in the timeline in order for you to actually edit that motion. Now, the best absolute thing about this motion trail, and this is the thing that I really like and I think that it makes it incredibly useful, is that just like a layer, when you put a layer on top of a motion, that it affects not only the key, but the surrounding area of your animation, the same exact thing happens with this motion trail here. So if I actually move this motion trail, see what happens? I'm actually moving the neighboring keys as well. And it's giving me a representation of what the new curve is going to look like. And this is incredibly powerful for your animations because all of a sudden you can start like visualizing um, how things are going to be or look like as you are making edits to your curves. And this is really, really good especially if you actually have a big edit to do, you can actually start kind of like pushing poses or pushing uh, animations to have more or less of the motion that you want, right? So if I want this, this hand here to actually go lower throughout this thing, so I can actually make it go higher here and then lower there and see how easy that was. And it gives me a really nice representation if there's anything going wrong, either before or after really powerful stuff really awesome to actually that autodesk has made this change and i really enjoy it so that is basically in a nutshell uh, motion trails and how i use them 
Now, obviously there's still some issues when it comes to like, sometimes the frames don't, don't actually show up automatically. If that happens, make sure you select your base layer, select your animation layer again, and that shows up again. But in comparison to how motion trails used to work before, it's like night and day. You can, it, they are actually usable now and I love them. And I think this new feature where you can actually click a key and see how your curve gets edited live in your viewport is incredibly powerful because you can start spinning and moving your, car your camera around the character to start to see where you can actually improve your curves and your animation as you go through it. So I hope that was useful for you guys. It's, I think it's a tip that I enjoyed quite a bit and I hope you guys enjoyed too. Now, I cannot go away without mentoring my patrons. Thanks a lot for everybody that has been supporting me. Please go ahead and visit it if you'd like to know more. And ultimately, thank you very much for Autodesk for supporting me for another season. It's been another uh, really cool season that we've been talking and sharing and um, listening to you guys about your requests, which is really cool. Now we're gonna go into a new season in the new year. I'll set up a video for you guys to actually know what's coming, the new format and how fun it's going to be. So stay tuned for that. That is in the new year. But for this year, it's a wrap. Power Tip Season 2 is done. And I hope you guys have a great Christmas, a great new year and enjoy your holidays. See you guys next time. And until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.